This is Tiger Cats post game okay. on the Tiger Cats Audio Network. Welcome to Tiger Cats uh, post game after a 26 to 12 Tiger Cats loss to the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. The Bombers go to three and zero. The Tiger Cats go to zero and three and. Joined by Andy Fantuz. Lots in the post game. We'll hear from Coach O. Uh, player interview, performer of the game, and then Ticats Roundtable. Boy, this this is a, a tough one to break down, Andy, because you know, I thought the Tiger Cats looked really good at times, and, and then the offensive line did struggle a little bit, and then of course there's our Willie Jefferson pick six, which was a little bit of the difference maker. Yeah, it was really disappointing going into halftime down. Uh, 14 to 9 there when you sort of felt like they had control in the game and that late drive with the with the big pass to Dembski followed by a one yard run uh, really changed momentum and then you know in the second half it's sort of an even game for the most part other than that uh, those two late turnovers and the, the one of them of course went for a touchdown so that's just a killer when you're you know, you, you go a whole game without even scoring a touchdown for the Thai Cats to, to give up a a free touchdown, um, uh, just salt on the wounds there, and then and then of course the next drive and another pick to, to seal the game. So, uh, yeah, just a disappointing one. It just seems like the Winnipeg team, um, like Luke just mentioned it, they're they're not too dissimilar to the Tie Cats right now, except they just have that they just know how to win and they just know how to finish the job and not make those mistakes that are gonna are really uh, change the game. That's tough. Why don't we assess your car star's keys to victory um, for Hamilton? I know you had a lot to unpack in the in the pregame when you spoke of those keys to victory. And obviously, if Ty Cats come up short, they lose twenty six to twelve to Winnipeg. But uh, how do you assess them? Yeah, well, I'm glad I didn't change it to the weather because that didn't really play a factor <laughs> no, after all that. Uh, um, but uh, number one was quick decisions for Dane. And this is kind of a wash for me because uh, I did feel like they, they were able to neutralize that defensive line uh, with, as far as the Dane's decisions went, he wasn't holding onto the ball and taking any coverage sacks. Um, however, it just wasn't sharp. It just didn't feel like they got into a rhythm too often. And uh, he did have 25 completions, but um, they, Winnipeg had the one sack and a couple bat downs at the line of scrimmage. So I'm going to just kind of give this one a wash. How about your second key? Second key was sack Zach. And that one uh, I'm impressed with. I will give him a check mark on that because they had the Tiger Cats had three sacks. They also had a number of times where uh, Zach was kind of scrambling sideways and throwing the ball. Uh, with somebody right in his face. He got thrown down to the ground a few times as well as he was throwing it. So um, they, I think the D-line did their job here, and I think Mark Washington did a good job of, of scheming some blitzes from the secondary and the linebackers and, and, and some zone drops uh, to really confuse them, um, early, especially early in the game. All right, why don't we hit your third key? Well, third key was win the turnover battle, and um, unfortunately, that that one is a loss once again. And no surprise that you know you lose the game. It's it was only two to one in the turnovers, but however, uh, one of them was for a touchdown, so that's kind of worth more than one right there. So, uh, yeah, they're gonna have to clean that up, and, and not necessarily Dane's fault. Both of those interceptions kind of were tipped by the at least touched by the receiver before being intercepted. However, it's just something you got to clean up. Turnovers, though, I think we can say whether it's the timeliness of the turnovers or, you know, the result, whether it's the pick six by Willie Jefferson. It's an early season story for the Tiger Cats that obviously, you know, you don't, it's going to have to be cleaned up, certainly when Edmonton comes in on Canada Day and going through the schedule, because as you said, you win the turnover battle, it's one of your keys, <laughs> then you're, you're going to be successful more often than not. Yeah, it's always one of my keys. I mean, it's the most, the single most important factor in football to, to determine the outcome. Uh, but it is a long season. They, they have 15 games left in the regular season. Last year, they didn't start well in the turnover uh department and they ended up tops of the league so uh, you know they have the DNA to turn it around and they have an opportunity 
coming here in, in Canada at Tim Hortons Field uh, against a struggling Elks team to, uh, to, to right the ship, both in the turnover um, realm and just on the, in the standings. I guess it depends if you look at your glass half full or glass empty. Obviously, the 0-3 record is one thing, but games that really, you know, they're right there for the taking, a play here, a break there, you know, a timely turnover. It, it is, There's a foundation to build upon for that Canada Day game and, and, and build upon some of those positives that you talked about because it's not easy, you know, staring at an 0-3 start but at the same time, you're coming home. You've been right there in all three games. You have to accentuate that. You do. And it would have been easy to sort of lay down, being 0-2, being in Winnipeg, hostile environment, and having some some adversity earlier the, early in the game. And, I, you know, I was proud of the team. They, they responded well. They were fighting. Uh, you know, we'll talk about our player of the game. He kind of just get, adding that spark when they needed it. Um, and th so there's certainly some takeaways and some positives. And but you, <laughs> you know you're gonna we're gonna talk to Coach O in a few minutes, and you know I'm not gonna be the one saying that to him. And no, <laughs> it's uh, it, it's not at the point of, of a must win, but it's at the point of of we gotta get, start getting some results and avoid any negative talk, negativity in the media, in the in the in the community, and certainly don't let that creep into the locker room uh, or or the, the coaches' room um, because there's a lot of talent on this team. You can see the potential. You put you you know you mix and max mix and match the last couple games in different ways. Even the first game defensively, I mean, you mix and match some of these performances in, and you got the. You know, you got the, the recipe for an outstanding team. It's just a matter of putting it all together. Uh, and, and it's a process sometimes. And, but, but, you know, Coach O is, nobody's better than Coach O to, uh, to get that job done and, and make this team gel. Yeah, and we'll hear from him uh, hopefully momentarily. Uh, before we do, you know, just to go back to Dane Evans, um, he looked a little frustrated at times. Um, he was rushed a lot, as you said, the decision making, he had to make some decisions quickly. Um, as a receiver, did you pick up on kind of body language of quarterbacks or sometimes the emotions of quarterbacks? And did it adjust your kind of focus at all? Or were you kind of just kind of focusing on what it was you needed to do? Uh, you can see it. When you have a, a quarterback who's struggling and you see that, you know, when he missed that screen pass because uh, Jeff Code had his arms up and, and how frustrating that was because Malik Irons had had nothing but daylight in front of him he missed a couple of passes on the outside and you see when he runs off the field and he gives like the high five uh, you know slaps his hands together and, and just disappointed you can see he's agitated he's pre he's pressing a little bit um the good thing is is that he didn't force the ball and, and he didn't make any mental errors uh in a really negative way in this game because it's easy to do in those situations where you're really desperate to make something happen as the leader of the team uh as the expectations on you are, are as high as can be and uh, just just haven't quite got there so uh as a receiver down the long story short to answer your question yeah. like you, you you can certainly pick up on that but you're gonna have have guys that come and, and settle them down all right, happy to be joined by Coach O uh, right now. Um, he is uh, presented by Access Storing. Uh, Coach, thanks for uh, taking a little bit of time uh, with us post-game here. Obviously, a tough game, uh, you know, against Winnipeg, uh, defending Grey Cup champions. Uh, what's kind of the message towards, you know, your your team as you head back home, getting ready to face Edmonton on Canada Day? Yeah, you know, the messaging we keep in, in between the walls, to be honest with you. Um, but at the end of the day, uh, we weren't good enough tonight. We didn't, uh, we didn't score enough points to win. I thought we played uh, well. We had, we had our chances, and uh, we didn't get it done, period. Coach, were there any positives, uh, individual performances that you can take from this game that you saw in live action? Yeah, there's always, you're always going to be pulled those up out you know but those aren't things that we're, we're focusing on right now right singling out individuals during a loss and saying you know that's that's kind of not where we're at right now uh we we uh we win as a team uh we lose as a team we tie as a team so you know i'm definitely proud of uh, uh the effort that we gave um we need to you know we got we got to win football games and 
and that's just the bottom line. So, you know, Edmonton coming in on uh, on Friday for Canada Day. That's going to be a very special game. But obviously, your focus is it won't be on fireworks and holidays. It will be on on getting uh, a victory. Uh, give us uh, what's going to be your approach this week with the team building up to Edmonton. Yeah, I'm not quite sure of my approach at this time. Right, this is still settled in we know we're going to play in seven days these these games turn around but uh we've got some we got some deep diving to do and we'll do that and and then we'll figure out exactly what our approach will be uh for edmonton well coach lots of season left lots of football left um take care of the take care of the body and the mind and uh we'll see you next week no i appreciate it keep your chin up guys the best is yet to come we'll be all right I love that message at the end. The best is yet to come. And uh, I think that's the right message. I mean, you could sit there and throw garbage cans around, but what does that do, right? The best is yet to come. Keep your chin up. Great, great approach by the coach. What do you think? Oh, absolutely. He's uh, he's always spot on. I love I, Just his approach to life, his approach to football, it doesn't really change. It's, it's, uh, it's about the people, about always getting better each and every day. And, um, and it's going to lead to lead to good things. It's just taking, you know, taking a few games here to, to get going, but uh, the, the Tiger Cats are going to be fine. They have so much talent, such a good, you know, leadership with the, with the coaches and with Dane and, uh, and, the, and, the, and the veterans on the team, the captains on the team. So uh, just hope it happens sooner than later. It's um, just, just those... You know, just those small plays in the game are just make it really determining it, and uh, they're not going towards the Ticats' way. We, um, you know, there's uh, definitely something for the Tiger Cats uh, to look at, but boy, what a weird scheduling thing this has been. You got Western teams coming out, uh, you know, the first three weeks. You've got a whole eastern slew of games with the tie, with the uh, the Argos coming up. Boy, it's weird. We, jumping in right now, we've got R.J. Broadhead and Luke Tasker as uh, part of our Ticats roundtable. They, of course, were the gentlemen who called the game. And uh, you know, I want to go right to you first, Luke, because uh, I thought you made a you know it's it's a great point at the end of the half. It was. Um, that 50-50 ball that Nick Dembski set up the touchdown, and that and that seemed to really kind of change things a lot for the Tiger Cats because you give up a touchdown right at the end of the half. Those are tough to recover from. Yeah, they are, and that was cover zero. The Tiger Cats brought pressure all night, and when you're doing that, well, you're banking on a couple things that the that the pressure is going to get to the quarterback and 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 force a sack or an errant throw. And honestly, I don't, I don't know if you can call it much more than that. I mean, Zach Claros did an unbelievable job of getting rid of the ball to a catchable location, but Tunde Adelike was right there as well. The truth of the matter is that you take that risk when you run cover zero, and a lot of times that goes the right way for you as a defense, and you get that uh, pressure throw or the, or the sack, but I just you can't take away from what was an unbelievably athletic adjustment to the ball uh, on, on, on a really well-run, uh, uh, properly executed cover zero. So sometimes that's going to happen, and it's not really exactly about, you know, not running cover zero in that situation or even doing it better. you got to be ready for some for teams to make those plays sometimes, and then you got to bounce back with your own uh, uh, explosive plays. Well, Luke, we'll get back to that. We have Alden Darby in the locker room here uh, presented by Access Storage. Uh, Alden, how you doing, bud? Could be better, of course, but, you know, I'm alive, I'm breathing, so thankful for that. What do you take away, uh, Alden, from, from, from tonight's game? It just seemed to be a real battle uh, all four quarters long. I, I thought, you know, there were some great moments on all three sides of the ball. Um, what do you take away from, from today's game? I mean, I mean, they were they were the better team. I mean, we had a couple, couple bad breaks that didn't bounce our way. I mean, that's football. That's life. You know what I mean? We can't can't account for certain things. We just gotta continue to fight, continue to push. You know what I mean? Biggest thing is you gotta continue to stay together. There's no excuses. It's it's no it's it's none of that. But it's just like I said, a couple of things that didn't go our way. We fought hard, and and that's all we're gonna continue to do. You know what I mean? Well, then we saw a lot of incredible individual performances in the defensive backfield today. And um, with Mark Washington adding some more pressure, 
uh, compared to the last couple of weeks shows the trust they have one on one with the, with you guys in the back end. Um, how nice is it to know that you have that that you know that that trust from the coach and and the guys around you they can all play together and uh, and get the job done. Well, the trust comes from how we prepare. You know, he, he sees how we practice. He sees how we prepare every week. So he trusts us to do our job. You know, we're a lot of we're all vets in that back end. So he knows whatever he calls, we're going to play it to our best ability. And of course, throughout the week, we're 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 going hard. We're studying film. We're we're out there communicating. We're putting ourselves in the best situation possible. You know, so. Um, it, it's good to know that the coach sees our hard work, the coach sees what we're doing and putting it work, but it's also good to know that we're giving them that same trust, you know? Well, Alden, uh, you know, we've got a seven-day seven day week here and uh, a chance to get, get back on the right path against the Elks next week. So take care, and uh, we'll see you next week. Thank you, guys. I appreciate that a lot. Have a good one. Alden Darby, uh, post-game interview presented by Access Storage. Uh, you know, we've heard from... Coach O, and we've heard from Alden Darby, and I'll, I'll go to you for this, RJ. There, you know, for a team that's coming out 0 and 3 with three tough losses, um, there, a lot of positivity coming from this team, and, and a kind of a life perspective as you know. And then they focus on football, which at least is something good as you have Edmonton in on Canada Day. Yeah, you're right, Steve. And always, always, the Tiger Cats always have that positive attitude. I think it comes from Coach O. Uh, never make excuses next man up mentality and, and they know they've got to fix some things we knew this would be a tough schedule in Saskatchewan's tough in Winnipeg's tough yeah probably should have won the game at Tim Hortons Field against the Stampeders but Tiger Cats have to be better in the red zone have to move the ball have to get touchdowns and you look at what happened in, in this game with the the turnovers you could have those plays done 10 times and nine times that ball's not going to bounce <laughs> right directly to a, a Winnipeg Blue Bombers. So there's some bad luck involved. Um, you know the Tiger Cats. The, you, you mentioned it already, Andy. This is very similar to their start last year, although it wasn't three losses in a row. But they turned it around. They cleaned things up. And they're a veteran group. They know what they need to do. It, it's it's pretty clear. <laughs> they need to be run the ball better, be a little better on offense, and get some breaks. And those will happen if they, if they keep moving forward. But this 0-3 start to me is nothing. Nothing to worry about at all. <laughs> well, if there was anything that was concerning, which what group would it be or what area of the team would you find? Would you th say is the most concerning right now? I would say offense. I'd say moving the ball, taking advantage of, of scoring plays. They've got to get touchdowns instead of field goals. And the running game, Sean Thomas Erlington is a, a workhorse trying to make things happen, but um, it makes it easier for the, for the defense when... The run isn't really producing a lot that they can really key on the offense. So, you know Dane Evans. He'll blame himself and he'll be he'll be better. You know he's going to work hard. I fully expect to to see the Tiger Cats uh, improve. I think it'll be a good game against Edmonton. But again, these first three games, no concern at all. 0-3, that is not insurmountable. I love your positivity, RJ. <laughs> You're the man. The uh, to, 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 to the offensive concerns, though, the second half, what, what I was what I was uh, encouraged by is that Dane Evans was not forcing it. I mean, those turnovers weren't a result of forced throws. I thought they were well-thrown balls that could go either way or could have been receptions just as easy as they were turnovers or knockdowns. So I didn't think that Dane Evans was necessarily forcing things uh, inappropriately, but I don't think that he had enough time to really make a great down the downfield read in the pass game and of course the run game sort of continues to struggle we did see a few uh you know five plus yard runs from sean thomas Erlington tonight but i, I the, the the adversity on the offensive line is an ongoing struggle for the tie cats and and that uh, it's got to get cleaned up uh as they start to try to piece together some wins i yeah. want to i want to put this out to to both no offense rj to both of the receivers here because i i, I you make a great point about you know, Dane Evans was sacked once tonight, but he was rushed a number of times. Mm. For both you, Luke, and Andy as receivers, what does that kind of do to your job if you have to break off routes a lot quicker, come back to the ball, or just not to get to the spots that you need to? Because it's almost like a domino effect when a quarterback gets rushed. Am I, am I off base with that? Yeah, you know, it's sort of like a, a cardinal sin for receivers <laughs> to start trying to 
account for an offensive line shortcoming. I mean, once everyone starts deciding to do their own thing, things can really get ugly. It really comes down to play call and giving the quarterback options sort of in what I want to say, like a legal way. If everyone starts going out there vigilante style and just starts doing their thing, yeah. it can get a little it can get a little kooky. But for the plays where it is your responsibility to say cut something short, let's say you have, you know, your hot your hot route type of thing. You know, that, that, that certainly can come into play at times when an offensive line is struggling. But for the most part, you got, you got to stay in your lane. And it's as tough as, as it is. I remember such some really frustrating moments and times in my career and in games where, just like you said, Steve, it's like you really, really just want to say, just turn around and just give the quarterback an option. But you got to work within, within a greater concept. And, and, and you know, the, tr the, the great thing about football is that it takes all 12 of us on the same page executing properly. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. It's complimentary football. Yeah. You gotta do your job and you gotta be able to count on the guy next to you. And, and the guy next to you, and the guy next to that, and the guy next to that. So that goes from receivers to the offensive line. And right now there's three potential starting offensive linemen on the six game injured list. We saw uh, Chris Van, Van, Van Zyl go go down as well. He did return, but um, you know, you saw Kay Okafor in there, he, he comes in with the probably the toughest challenge in the league and there were a number of times that we were watching where he kind of just let it let a let somebody ray through so he'll learn a lot from this game and and respond well if he's if he's back in there next week uh but he, these guys are tough it wasn't the only one even even uh even some of our uh, you know the other vet, veteran offensive linemen were were, were losing their one-on-one -on -one battles so um that's something they're gonna have to pick up winnipeg's a good defense yeah they are. True. Like, they're a really good football team. So they haven't been flashy all year. They, uh, they, they're three and zero. Yeah, <laughs> and, exactly. Yeah. They find and, a way. Yeah, they do. They. It, do. it would have been a third straight victory without getting twenty points had they not had the pick six. Right. That's, you know, it's a special team that can find ways to win, and the Thai Cats just aren't there. You've been in the city a lot, six, seven years as a player. Luke, six, seven years as a player, and, and RJ now second year. Uh, well. We could talk about the power of positive thinking, but what do you think the mood of the city, of the Ticat fan base is as, you know, the team makes the turn home? Do you, will it still be a very, very supportive fan base or will it be a little bit more of a, a pensive fan base? Like, uh oh, you know, this is not how we pictured things. I think it's okay right now. I think that it, uh, the Elks game will be very important. Uh, both as the product on the field, what happens, but 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 ultimately just the scoreboard at the end of the game. Um, if that one goes the wrong way, there could be some negativity going around. Uh, but I think right now it's it's uh, they still have faith. I mean, this is Tiger Town, and you yeah. know we know we got a good team here. Yeah, that that's the word I was going to use, Andy, is faith and. Coach O leading the way. He knows nothing but taking this team to to great cups. Uh, Dane Evans, a quarterback. Everybody can be better. So I, I think there's no concern at all in Hamilton. Luke? I, I think that, like any fan base, it, it's going to be a, a, if things start to go wrong, it might get a little bit negative in the stadium a little bit quicker. I mean, you know, I, there might be a shorter leash on some, on some adversity and, and some poor play. But I, I would say this about the Hamilton uh, fan base and the city and and the love for the Tigers. It's only going to take one, meaning one victory, and 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 <laughs> and all you know, all, all wrongs forgotten. I, I think I think this Canada Day game coming back to Morton's Field is the opportunity that that was that's needed for for Hamilton. Yes, they have to beat Edmonton, but they also have to win the right games. They have to win their East Division games. They haven't faced an East Division opponent. Not only do you take points away from those teams you get the points that, to me that's the difference yeah double um, damage for the east yeah east i'm not worried games. about these west division games at all we're, and we're debuting the jerseys as well on canada day right that's every time sharp yeah yeah uh gotta get to i got uh, a chance to rock that jer that new jersey at the basketball game today it was, did, uh, yeah was it oh, lucky yeah. uh it, it well you? i don't know if we won or not i don't think we really <laughs> could oh, score oh. like that and he doesn't well, care about not, winning but that, we had some the of the answer. cfl refs so they, it, right there they were giving us all the calls or, <laughs> or giving the other team all the calls yeah, i don't even know i don't even know <laughs> uh, gotta get to our performer of the game presented by hercules tire right on uh, our strength 
Andy, kind of a tough one to pick a player of the game, and I'm not saying that there was a, some collective good moments on all three sides of the ball. Yeah, it was a, it was very spread out as far as the, the highlights of the game, and uh, I'm going to give it to Sean Thomas Erlington. Um, not that the numbers stood out, but it was more of the fashion in which they which they were you know were achieved, and he had six carries for 29 yards, but some, some lots of run after contact. Uh, yes. Sometimes two or three broken tackles. He also caught all five of his targets for 30 yards. Again, he's leading the leading the team in in yards after catch, and uh, uh, I thought he deserved that. There were a couple good defensive play, player uh, individual plays players on defense, but uh, Sean Thomas Arlington gets the nod. So faith, positivity. That's kind of the take. Coach O started it in his post game interview, and it just continued rolling with Alden Darby and all of us. So uh, 0 and 3 collectively. Um, again, you, you don't think the season really starts you know, to get to all those divisional games? You know, games? I, think, I think we should clear it up. I think there's a difference <laughs> between having faith in something and then truly believing in something. So, uh, and, and, and I could tell, tell a story on that. Uh, yeah. I think we've got to wrap up here soon. But um, so, you know, having faith in something, you know, yeah, okay, you can say I have faith in something, but when you truly believe, will you will you dive in and will you go all in on it? And, and that's that's a difference. And uh, you know, one day we'll have a long story about this. That one thing I learned from Ken Austin actually a long nice. time ago. You might have know the same story. All right, awesome, oh, great. I'm not here next week. I won't hear. It. Well, I'll, to, I'll tune in. <laughs> tune on, in. That, on that philosophical note, RJ and Luke, thanks a lot for uh, joining uh, on the uh, Tie Cap post game for Andy Van Tuz. I'm Steve Clark. Um, back with Tie Cats pregame presented by Journey Awards Tie Cats, home to the Edmonton Elks on Canada Day next Friday night on the Tie Cats Audio Network.